We are live. Hockey fans, welcome back to another special edition of the Hockey Nation Live Show. This is your host, a cold friend. She's directly from the boot. We have to go all the way to the West Coast to find our co host, Michael DeVellano. Good morning. Happy Wednesday, middle of the week. And we have another busy night tonight in, in the NHL. It was a slow night like yesterday, and uh, it's a boring week. And uh, has to be a Montreal Canadian fans. You have nothing to do tonight, so you do something else. But we watch other game that will maybe helping the other fans of Montreal to not too much criti uh, criticize about their team when they see other team performing. Uh, but uh, overall, yesterday the big news was all about that. Uh, two big news, but I think the biggest news is about, about Mr. Tim F Peel. <laughs> this guy. I mean, listen, I, as a coach, I don't know what the rules of the game are, Pierre, because they change game to game. <laughs> I, I think that there's been a, a lot of frustration this year with ticky tack penalties, but I think historically, like he was make he was, you know, It, But, you know, first of all, he was the referee yesterday between the Detroit Red Wing and the Nashville Predator. Yeah. So that that's start everything. For sure. There. For no. sure. He, and he wants to, you know, he got no, they have a penalty. Life. They have a penalty uh, again, again, Colorado or or maybe not. It was Adversen, I believe. Go Our, break away, yeah. whatever it was, the play. The then dive he, on Johnny Merrill. He jumped on the golden door, right? Oh, the first one you mean. Yeah, and he did not call the penalty with him. So that's the first one there. Then after that, during the game, he mentioned about he should, you know, he should give a penalty, whatever it was, the, the conversation. But the problem it was the mic he was on. So people heard the conversation where he used also the F-bombs behind that part of there. So, But the, the, the bigger know. issue is the integrity of, I wanted to get give them a penalty early on, right? So it's like he's premeditating giving Nashville a penalty. You can't do that. That's you no. know, the job of the refs. They got four guys on the damn ice. Their job is just to call the damn rule book. <laughs> so at the end of the day is because really he mentioned that. that part over there, right? So now many player, ex-player, people talking, expert coaches, John Ines, coach for Predator, said, we heard this all the time. We know this of all course, the time. Of course. Between the period, between on the ice, at the at the timeout TV, the referee would say, hey, by the way, I missed that one, I'm pretty sure. Or yeah. you're going to give, uh, I don't know, you're going to give a five versus three, right? Two penalty for Colorado, example. And then yeah. I'm telling you right now, 90% the next penalty is going to be for open end team. And ninety percent. So, like, why is this a shock? Oh, you're so, not allowed. To, like, they've been doing this since the beginning of time, Pierre. You've been on the bench. I've been on the bench. How many times are there makeup calls? How many times is one team in the lead and they think, "Oh, let's even it out"? It depends on where you are, and who the ref is. Like, you could be in, like, in Washington State. You know, there's gonna be ticky tacky little penalties, and they're picking the side. In Toronto, you know, they're going to just try to make it so it's, you know, if one team's running up the score, they're not going to get any calls anymore. Like, you just know. <laughs> yeah, so the, 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 the point is like uh, Colin Campbell uh, make a statement this morning about inequity and NHL and honest, honest, everything like that, and they oh, just terrible. decide to remove the referee, um, and he's going to lose, but he's not lose his job. He's just removed from NHL, and uh, he, he is a guy – Ref over 1,000 game, I believe. Um, yeah. you know. Is Colin Campbell still work in the NHL? Yeah. What? He's still there. Really? Yeah. Wow, I didn't even know that. NHL Senior Executive Vice President of Hockey Operations, Colin Campbell. Man, yeah. I thought he was long gone. Wow, that's crazy. Well, there's a guy that's been around a while. So um, that's what happening. So there was a big news over there. Uh, this morning, everybody talk about this, coaches, expert, everything like that. The, the, the only problem with that, because the mic was open. That's that's it. If the mic is not open, nobody here, and nobody It's, talk about this situation. He's still referee tomorrow night. 
referee, like coaches are all over refs. It's a tough thing, but there's four of them on the ice. Now the problem is the interpretation of the rule book. And then there's like the unwritten rules. So, you know, yeah. like we, we have terms for it. They put away the whistle. They even it out. <laughs> like it's a makeup call. They didn't make up these words yesterday. No, no, it's just the he, he express. <laughs> you get he express is how you think, and yeah. that's what uh, everybody knew about that. So, for the oh, integrity sure. of the NHL, for the fans, for the management, for the players, <laughs> that's where they they put them peel out now. So. Of course. So the question is, if the NHL was do it like this year, the coaches are complaining about what? Uh, really? COVID-19. <laughs> well, but the, the refereeing is like there's just cheap, ticky-tacky little penalties. Like uh, you don't know what's going to be a call and what's not. It's like, oh, you touch the guy and it's a call. I think, again, it's more about consistency because you have some game, you have two penalty for six penalty minute max, but you, you, you don't have a light penalty game anymore like you was. It's rare you're going to have like eight, ten power play both team now. You're going to see one and three, one and two, one and zero, zero and three. Um, it's there's less no penalty this year was before. There's no fighting, right, Pierre? Like, there's no enforcers. Those are gone for the most part, so it's a lot less. Uh, yeah. And the calls that there are, like, the players are very disciplined generally. There are stick infractions, but there's stuff where you're touching a guy and he's falling and they're, let, they're calling it. So I think the NHL, this is great because it makes them look bad. But what what's really made them look bad is how they're not giving the referees any direction. And this is you know probably part of it, which is they're not sitting there emphasizing the integrity of the game. They're saying you have to call this in the rule book because they would have fared this guy out well before now. He's not the only one. But again, I always said me is as I was same thing it's you can put eight referee one referee six referee it's not yeah. about judgment right yeah. and michael david and you can see that play call it and then another person beside him don't call it whatever That's is the true. reason both of you have reason yeah you're right because you had decision to take and so it's really you cannot be perfect right no. you, you cannot be the only thing i think is like you said is integrity be sure you not turn around like a zero and eight for one thing versus you know what i mean but uh, i think in general it's pretty good um but uh, i think some people and miss a are. lot it really depends where you are yeah so um let's make uh, honestly that situation on uh, for the tim pill uh, but um you know they, they try to protect the head They try to protect the injuries for That's big player again the board if you turn that you still have every game couple of, you know not every game but one night you're going to have always someone someone get hit from the board or a knee or something like that well i, I think the other thing that would be really nice if they address pierre is the hitting from behind i i don't understand this like you you're trying to protect headshots you're worried about trip little nonsense And how many times are guys getting hit from behind? They can't protect themselves. Yeah, but it's funny you bring this because I would bring to you. So you have this person, you have Gallagher get hit in the in the corner. Um, I, I think it was Vancouver, was, whatever, the last game, whatever it is, right? And then the people were screaming, the experts said, this is why did they call the two minute there? It really is a really thought. Now you have yeah. another, now you have a one, two player in any show. I think it was one was Jay Beagle and someone like they've been in the league for 10, 15 years. And he said the player, they know they're going to get called at two minutes if they turn their back to the players. So they learn now that the, some players, they know they're going to get hit in the back. Yeah, they, they, they show the yeah. number. Absolutely. The, and so that's what he said. That's, mini, you know, minimize the, The 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 Andy Creedy or loyalty the players like that to do that. So it was another you know like a lot of people blaming the ref and everything like that. And they have a couple of players playing in each other over 12 years, 15 years. Express another way where it said, look, when I play okay, the yeah. beginning here and in NHL, this never happened. This is never going to now. The player learning to turn oh. their back, show the number, 
And I, for me, it was a great point to another perspective of someone in the league. You know what I mean? So it, it's, Listen, it's a tough job. Nobody's saying it's not. The guy got caught. He's not the only one. It's the way it is. It's human. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Tim Tim Peel, go ref men's league. <laughs> Who was the uh, first one get last job as a referee? Oh, man. After a know. game. After a game? Yeah, like this. Like someone left the game. Like the, it was the last game because of that situation. Or is a situation. I don't know. Don Koharski retired, right? Bruce Hood. Oh, that's right. But he was a ref for a long time. He was a pretty bad ref sometimes. But <laughs> so why he was that? a ref for a long time. Is he not in the Hockey Hall of Fame? I don't know. I don't think so. Really? No, after what happening during his game. What was, what was his last game? No, remember? Yeah, he was nominated in 1994. Really? But he's not been elected. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pierre, you and I will be elected. It will be like elected <laughs> We're going to be on the bro. <laughs> if they put that guy in the. F- <sighs> I will be on the broadcasting live <laughs> out of fame one day. <laughs> yeah, right. I hope not. Oh my God. <laughs> um, because the only one there drone photography there's more than that there's more than one person here jesus but uh, the point here is um because the game between nordic quebec nordic montreal canadian the friday night oh the yeah. that's him <laughs> with that god those were jeez that was a great rivalry pair i love the nordiques man it was like <laughs> i i hated them too but they were so, like when they had Michelle Goulet and the Stasny brothers, it was pretty awesome. Yep. Even Joe Hunter was there. <laughs> like, so yeah. it was a big one over there, and that's the only reason. Drone photography, I'm the only one here. Welcome if you are the only one. Yeah, I we mean, need, there's, we need there's more five drone people, like you. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you're the only one commenting. Someone else comment. You're embarrassing us here. All right, <laughs> what do you think of this game? Devil's Flyers. Uh, the score don't show exactly what happening because the score on empty net attained two goals. Um, really? uh, at least one. Wait, did. Philadelphia did. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, it was four one. Yeah, and uh, a pair of were they empty netters that early? Oh yeah. At eleven minutes. Uh, maybe not. So the third goal was what? The third goal is Kachiri at 11.37 in the third. That made it 4-2. No. to two. So it must have been just... He missed one. He's 4-2. He missed one goal. But they didn't score it. Why would they score it? He scored at one goal? minute, two seconds, I believe. Yeah, 18.58. Yeah, there we go. So that they was, scored an empty net there. The goalie? And they removed the goalie there, and then they score, and then they try. They almost score again. Like, it was close. They tie up the game. But again, the fire was not there at all this game. Uh, Devils, oh, great, know. great game for the Devils. To be honest with you, I have to give credit. Blackwood was great in front of net, but I think uh, uh, the line, um, Zaka with the Russian kid, Zakarantavachevich, whatever his last name. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, he had a great uh, game yesterday. One goal, one assist, I believe. Oh, that's a good goal. So, um, yeah, so that's happening. Uh, door that game, and I think Fly Forest came too late, played the oh, last period. Jeez. So, um, yeah, I just demonetized us, Pierre, right there. What I showed a video, I am. Uh, can I do that? God damn it, how are we gonna what, what, what happened in there? That's where they happened. Uh, between right, so uh, that, who scored for the Devils? Um, Zaka. Zaka, yeah, I was glad to see Pavel Zaka score. Joel yeah, Ferb, the, 14th, or what? Zajac? No, Zaka didn't get it. Zajac scored. Zajac, I'm sorry, I'm yeah. sorry. Is Z- yeah, 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 yeah. But again, yeah, yeah, he was this one. But again, this was a pass for the Russian kid. Shara Govanich got it, and goal. he scored before that one. Also, the 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 goal is Zajac. He was about ten seconds at the first period, I believe. 
Uh, Mike McLeod scored the first one. A second period. Yeah, two, yeah. 20, 24 seconds, second period. But Zarek Kalvich score. Um, honestly, I missed the part of this first period. Um, but um, You're not getting paid anyway, Pierre. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but uh, Zakharovic and Z have a Nami in a great goal again, and then Z he scored. He helped uh, Zach. You have a helper on the Zaga goal, where it's another yeah. great goal over there. Um, but again, I, I, we have to mention one thing here is the the performance of Ty Smith. Uh, nobody talk a lot about him um, as a rookie. Ooh, that's um, a good goal. And he's doing very well. Yeah, I mean, I love Ty Smith. He he killed us in the WHL. He killed us in the playoffs. Like he, it was like we had, you had no answer for him. He was so good. Now, I mean, you're seeing it in the NHL. He's they got a top pairing D there. Yeah. On the flip side, you know, um, you know, they missed a lot Kuchiri this year. I, I don't know how many games he played this year. I will really check, but you know, oh, I mean, so like, like Denver says, you're not the only one, buddy. 20 he has only played 20 game uh ty smith yeah and he's got 14 points or 12 15 but i'm wow. talking about uh kuchiri right now but um oh kuchiri i'm sorry yeah that, uh, yeah one point per game a 21 point 20 game you know he didn't he didn't play all the game for the flowers he, he missed about like uh 11 game and i think that's hurt a lot flowers probably I mean, he's clearly their best overall player. I mean, he's good two ways. Denver, welcome in the house, buddy. Hopefully you're doing well. Everybody left. What happened? And I'm sure you are doing well with your team, by the way. If you live in Denver, I don't know if you're Denver, Denver, but. He says um, he's got a Red Wing picture. I don't know about that. I don't know. Can I kind of say Yeah, it's Detroit well. versus like scoring on. Uh, is that Vancouver or is that Toronto? So it's a Vancouver. He's a Red Wing. He's maybe a, your buddy. Yeah, they're horrible. <laughs> they're coming along, right? They're going to yeah. leave second. Now, it's good to mention about Ty Smith. I think we don't him enough credit. Oh, God, he's yeah. really become, uh, uh, you know, I've been honest with you. You can watch him. Yeah. Um, he have a great pass on the. That's him. That's him on the. That's him on the on the goal. Uh, Zajac. Yeah. That's him. Great pass from the left. Oh, uh, to him, oh uh, yeah, he was. He sent the puck there, so that was pretty good to see that. He's so, so uh, The guy's yeah. never played a game in the AHL. He went right from the WHL to the NHL. Really? I guess so. Yeah, I I don't know why. I thought he was in the AHL. Check the stat. Welcome everybody. Good. <sighs> Good thing about having you boys to do give us some comments or questions we can answer to you. And I will we will try the best we can to helping you. Yeah, so he he went right from being in Spokane last year to the Devils. Yeah. No apprenticeship needed with that guy. Good for him. Yeah, very good. All right, Pierre. Second game. What was our next game? We had Chicago and Florida with yep. no Berkov. Um, that was the back, the you know the the big blowout for the Panthers. They heard at six thirty or seven o'clock, Barkov will be out of the lineup. Scratch. Uh, the good news about Ken Vell said after the game on this morning, he's going to be out, but it's not like a long time, so we don't know if it, the the what's going on with him. We're gonna know maybe more during the day today. But uh, he's not going to like, expect to missing a lot of games, so that's the good news for them. Um, I've been honestly uh, with you. First of all, it was uh, the Chicago celebrate um, Patrick Kane yesterday. It's one thousand uh, game, and uh, he gave like a, maybe like a, a skate around, right? Oh, okay. And and uh, the player was not there. The Panthers here, everything like that. But I just want to mention this to you. Um, you know, hockey is very special for me. It's about loyalty and degree relationship. And I've been in this for many years. And jo Joel Canville get out and he show up. Oh, did he? And wave to him when he was skating around. Oh, this good. really for me is priceless. Uh, some stuff like that you never forget. And, uh, you know, 
um, you know, they win three cup together, and I think that's a big thing about that. So, um, yeah. So, uh, just want to mention this to you. Uh, Blackout was all. Um, I think that's you can those game. Um, all oh, about the Panthers. They didn't show it. Jeez, I thought they would have showed it. Yeah, it's uh, all about the Panthers. Honestly, uh, all about the Blackhawks. They was hungry at the beginning of the game, and I think I feel like the way they played at the beginning, first play of Panthers. I think they was missing Barkov. Like they didn't know what to react. You know what I mean? Like Ashiri. Yeah, Ashiri was the first center of the the the. the you know what I mean? Oh my God. You have a good game. You know, so you have an amazing, great game. But again, so you have a couple of chains in the lineup. Um, one play assists. was. I'm sorry? You got two assists? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, one player I was being, uh, being honest with you, I was impressed for the Panthers was um, Tippett. Tippett oh, okay. had a very good game yesterday. He didn't score. But again, I think he, you know, he can show a little bit uh, what he is. And. Um, yeah, he's but, uh, so uh, the Blackout was hungry at the first period. They dominated the first period. Uh, they were all over the Panthers. Panthers, they do what they do. They're coming always the third period, finish strong. They dominate 14 7, I believe, the second, the third period again. That's good enough time to score. Um, but again, I think at the end of the day, um, they missed a couple of opportunities. Lankinen was unbelievable in front of that. To be honest with you, he, he stopped 33 out of 35 shots. Um, Another great performance for him. He was the first star of the game. Patrick Kane was the second star. Uh, and Angel or Angel, how you call him? Hegel. Hegel. Yeah. Um, I, impressive yesterday. Um, you know, it could could be like score, but uh, he, he he really fit over there. Uh, I like the the play, the way he play. Um, he have a one or two assists yesterday, and then uh, he uh, no, he I like him a lot. Um, you know, Drager was not bad, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, not good enough offensive, on offensive side for the Panthers to win. Former Red Deer Rebel. Yeah. So, um, no, he, he looked good, to be honest with you. Coach Frenchy, any streams you're doing for the game this week, knowing all the Habs games this week are postponed? Um, yeah, we're going to go John one tomorrow night, Florida weekend Panthers. I can, you know, we'll see there. I know we have no game for the abs, so we have to go back on the live, live stream a couple of times. So we'll be back at Thursday night. If you want to join, no problem. And, uh, yeah, I know no game until the 28th. You can sell for a game. So. so we had a lot of drama in this game, but it was mainly around the referee. Otherwise, yeah, we mentioned about that one over there. I think that this game is all about again, uh, Zaros is unbelievable. Uh, he did the same thing he did yesterday in Detroit, did the same thing in the Panthers. Uh, you know, he stopped what 31 or 21 shot, 31. I can see it. He just go 30, through that. Yeah, 31 of 31 gets a shutout. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Thomas Grace cannot buy a win, Pierre. They just, but, they you know, what I mean, like. You have to be like sub bold goal and not to have no win, you know what I mean? Crazy. <laughs> so uh they don't perform when he is there, but at the end of the day, um Nashville, it was a welcome back to Captain Roman Huzi yesterday. So that was good about that one over there. Um to have him back in the lineup. And uh, Nashville won the last what three of the last four games, I believe. Yeah. So a little, little bit better there. for them. Hang in. You know what I mean? Um <laughs> I you didn't know, expect Chicago to win last night. They got a little bit of a break, so that helps. The, Sun, the, the, Central, the Central Division for the fourth place is open up for Columbus, Nashville, Dallas, and um, Chicago. Yeah, I mean, you know, Dallas loses again last night in a game that we kind of expected they would lose. It was close. But, you know, they're getting – they're getting reps. Like they're 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 not going away. They're still got four games in hand. These guys. So yeah. even if they get three wins there, they're suddenly ahead of all of everyone except Chicago. Right now they play Tampa, and then after that it's the Florida Panthers. So good luck. Not any break over there. Good luck. <laughs> it was two one, by the way, not two zero. Oh, two to one. Sorry. Yeah. So you know, so that's why you know the. the 
again, they, they, they lost again, but they did not last by 6 7. They always offer a good game all the time. And um, I think that would be, you know, that's what happened for them for sure. So, um, with the Red Wings? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, and you're right. The the stars lose two to one. Yeah, the next one it was the lightning. First of all, I have to mention to you, Vasilevsky got his 12th game straight. He's about two game at the NHL record for the most straight game by the goaltender, 14. So um, he's he's 12 0 0 right now. He's looking amazing, and again, he got like only one goal again. Uh, Wait. You know. Didn't um, Bernie Perron win 33 games in a row? What? Bernie Perron, doesn't he have the record 33 games in a row? I don't think so. I think the record of um, of Bernie, Bernie Perron is with tie with something like that, no? Let's look. I'm curious now. I'll give you the, the record about that one. It's 47 win season. Back to back cups, blah blah blah. I I don't know what. So you think it was just like undefeated? Yeah, uh, just looking. The now, longest winning straight goaltender in NHL history is fourteen. Huh. Um, Sergey Poposki with Columbus three years, four years, five years ago. Honas Ho, Ho, Hiller for the Hanaim and thirteen fourteen. Tom Barrasso. Pittsburgh and 93, and then Tinny Thompson, Boston in 2029. Your buddy Chris Osgood for Detroit, 13 and 96, and A.D. Johnson, Boston in 71. My ten brother, and one goaltender, I know if you know him, I would say, wow, good luck. Ross Brooks. From what era? With Boston in 73, 74. What? Yeah, I have who? no clue who he is. <laughs> who was that? Russ? Russ Ross. Brooks. I've never heard of this guy. No. What? Wait, yep. he barely played. He played 13 games because he won 12 of them. <laughs> <laughs> what? So right here, 73-74? Yep. Who knew? 16-3. and three. 236. Yep. Jeez. He was a backup at Eddie che Cheevers. Yeah. Oh, no. Gilles Gilbert. Gilles Gilbert. Gilles Gilbert. Yeah. It was not bad. A good goalie. He was good. He was a good goalie. Yeah. Yeah, he was a very good goalie. He came at the tail end with Detroit. He was some of the... Jimmy I want to Thieves. mention this for the light names. We talk about St. Coast. We talk about Kishira. We talk about Brendan Point. We talk about Victor Edmund. And it, it can go like this, right? Vasilevsky and Kushev, Kush, um, Kush, uh, Sokachev. But uh, by the way, Vasil <laughs> Vasilevsky sent the puck straight in the face of uh, Sokachev last night. But um, <laughs> oh, we thought no. that him, I think he's like the new Brand Martian, the new Gallagher is about um, Yannick Gord. Um, he's 12 of the oh. year yesterday. Yeah, uh, he's so good. He's he's just buried there. He can play all three forward positions, Pierre. He's fast. He's built like a fire hydrant. He's like 5'9", yeah. 210. Yep. <laughs> he played third line, first line, second line. He played up Doesn't and matter. down. Uh, he, he He's really, you know, he's disturbed other team. And, you know, uh, it's just one to mention him because he has 12 goals this year. You know, he had 30 and 30, what, 31 game, 30 game. I don't know how many games they have right now. I mean, all you got to do is go back to 2017-18, and this guy had 64 points in his first full year. He's yeah. always been able to produce good numbers. Like, yeah. last year was off, but he played great in the playoffs. Yeah. I, I was hoping, Pierre, because, you know, there's like Palat, Gord, and Johnson. I was like, Detroit, Stevie Y, go get him. Because <laughs> he would he would have been like so much better than a men's to cop. They should trade Tyler Johnson for Detroit. I think as a man should take him. Like he, oh, he should have, yeah. That, that, you know, if you check Ty Johnson, how many goals he has, the minute Seven. he play, you know, he play on the third line, you don't play four line. He's and really a top six. Here. So he he's a legitimately very good second line centerman. He's yeah. better at center. He gets lost on the wing. I just want to insert to NHL about this. Um no, uh, you know, 
my my only concern about Columbus is the consistency um uh, again other team they lost again Carolina I'm not worried about them so how are they going to respond against Chicago um again Dallas again Florida again Nashville and uh, Detroit that's what they get their point there they do that I think they would be I, I would not be surprised they pass Chicago at the end of the year um one reason right now they're looking better first of all we have to mention is that Jones have an amazing great week last week Yep. I turn around now a little bit better. We have a difficult time this year. And, and you know, um, they have a good, great goaltender over there. They're de and their defenseman is great. It's just to see what they're going to do on offensive line. On the offensive, right? Atkinson is off right now. Domi yeah. is off. Uh, Laney is, is off. So they need more positivity. But if they can score three, four goals, they will win their 90% of those games usually. If only they had a number one centerman. But, you know, everybody <laughs> missed a couple of pieces over there, right? But to be a part of that <laughs> top four, that's what you need to do. And um, my 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 point to them is the next 10 game. It's really when I want to see the next 10 game, like Dallas and Columbus, what are you going to be and what Chicago is going to do the next 10 game. Is that Chicago can keep them, you know, and they have to keep their seven win of the 10 game if you want to make it. I mean, Ross Levick overall, you'd like to see him score a little bit more, but he's panned out pretty well. I mean, better than the Max Domi move. Line a, you know, you got to say is a bit of a disappointment overall. But, man, he's got so much ability. I think I'm not sure what to do with that guy. It's kind of weird. Do you think Line a will stay? Who? Patrick Line? A? I don't know. Uh, you know, Foley Neal is at the end of his contract, so – the, right now they are the mix. Right now he have a bad year. Tessier, very bad. Healthy oh, scratch. Yeah. Oh, I, I like Tessier. But he does not play. He's so bad. Is he in France? Yes. What? What happened? No, no. He he live. He was born in France. He he's in he's playing in France, Pierre. No, no, no. Yeah. I know. Look, he left. He's not on the roster. No, no. He is there. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, he was healthy scratch like two days ago. So why is he not on the roster? So it, is he playing? He's right there. Goals? He's right there in the middle, number forty-two. I know, but look, see, there's a star. Oh, here I'll show you. Look, it's showing he's no longer on the Columbus roster, and he's in France. What is going on? Is that right? He should not be in France. He's too good for that. I have no clue. That is weird. Move to taxi squad. Yeah. So is it just a weird thing where he's not on the roster because of taxi squad and he started the year in France? That's Must what I thought, but I, he did put the two game after that, so I don't know. That's got to be. He's too good, Pierre. He's a good player. I have like a tough him. year, but um, yeah, he's 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 a good player. He just needs if you I don't know. I think he'll be really good in here. I, you watch him; he's so fast. He plays like uh, yeah, zero point one point. The last sixteen, seventeen games. Well, welcome to Columbus. I mean, oh. we'll see. What's the next game? All right, what's the next game? That's a surprise me. That one. Which one? The next one. Coyotes? Yeah. Surprised everybody. Uh, another comeback for the Coyotes as their fourth of the year. Uh, they, you know what I mean? Uh, also, we want to mention the 200 uh, goal of uh, Nathan McKinnon and for Colorado. Uh, congratulations to McKinnon, who was the fastest players for and the history of Colorado, Quebec, to score the quickly 200 goal. For Colorado? Or Nordic. The fastest one. From Quebec? Or Quebec or Nordic or Colorado, both of them. Oh, the fastest in like Quebec, Nordic, Colorado history to score 200 goals? Yeah. Michel Goulet? You're close. Peter Stashny. It was one of the two. I mean, yeah, yeah. 
both can score at the same time. Another great performance in McKinnon. He got three points yesterday. Another great performance. Ratanen scored his 19th of the year, I believe. Uh, but again, it's more about Coyotes. They was become the the come back for the fourth time this year. Only two teams, Florida and another team, have come back five times this year so far to get a W. Uh, we have to congratulate uh, Adam Hill. For being honest with you, the bad news for Coyotes: they lost also. Yes, but uh, Renta is out now, so they don't have Cooper and Renta. So um, that's bad, uh, bad. Yeah, because now they have to go with Hill. You know, and I, I, I'm just surprised this year so many goaltenders fall apart. I, I guess I'm not just because of the condensed schedule. I mean, they play the whole game. That There's still practices going on. I think they're very susceptible to injury already. You play 60 minutes a game with all that equipment. And doesn't That's why I think Toronto was smart with four goals. No, but you can see that, like, you know, Boston, Rask is out, right? For Perske at the beginning of the year. And you can go all the way like that. Kumper is out. And you, you lose uh, top Nick at some point. Uh, you, you can go all the way like that. You know what I mean? Ottawa have four goals, then the danger release. You know what I mean? It does, it does not surprise me. I think you know, that, that the wear and tear of the shortened schedule is worse on the goalies than the players. Yeah. So Samsonov also uh, is out, right? So uh, he, he was out at some point, and, you know, Saros has just come back. And we can go like this all every, almost every team. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing. Yep. And you, then you look at Toronto, and they've got, like, Campbell and Anderson and Hutchison, and they had Dell. So I think they kind of anticipated, like, we need four goalies. That's why Vegas was smart and, like, no, we need two number ones there. Plus they got um, the Danish kid. And, well, he's not kidding, why is he? But, um, oh, my God, what's his name? Anyways, everybody's got, like, a, some backup plan. And then you got guys that have nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Th this was definitely a surprise. Went to shootout. I you mentioned know, also the first goal of tonight, uh, the nine of the Chikab, um, Chick Chick run. It's good for him to see that. He's had a great year, Pierre, overall. Yeah. So it's a good game to see that. And, uh, good He's on pace for, for like 20, 25 goals in a full year. Yeah. That's pretty good. I mean, he's always been able to get some points, but watch this wrister too. It's not even like he's winding up, just a wrister. Yeah, it was also the first game of the Hohenson yesterday. So um, for the Colorado Avalanche, he gave five goals. The, um, the Buffalo goalie that he gets. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be interesting to see that. Oh, my God. Well, that might be part of the reason why Arizona. Yeah. Look at the flex on that stick, Pierre. Yep. Damn. Yep. So, um, Yeah. That'll be happening there for another good point. Says this is really good for Coyotes. They need that if they want to stay in the race. Um, you know, uh, they don't win a lot for the last couple of games, and then it would be good for them to do that. So, um, All right. What are you excited about tonight? Any games? Um, I just wanted to mention, because you talk about the Bruins, um, you know, they supposed to practice today. They should be fine to play tomorrow. That's the first thing on the COVID-19. Um, so that's the first news about that. We'll see happening. We know already Montreal is on the postponed game until the March 28th. They're going to be reevaluate. We don't hear anything else why they have only two players right now, but uh, he could have more players. We maybe heard this more the next couple of days, but uh, that's the situation with Montreal. Before we join the game tonight, I wanted to mention to you that draft 2022 was accepted by the governor. Uh, they, they're going to have only uh, two team now on the on the on the lottery so, so um, before they've been drawing two right or three i mean and it limits yeah, yeah. so they dropped the three to two all right so teams will be restricted from moving up more than 10 spots what so this is coming only there. in 2022 well that's, right? that's the next draft not this coming, not this coming. Yeah. This, this coming is only about three to two. Got it. So again, Detroit will get screwed. So, um, <laughs> you know, 
Detroit will win first overall, and then there will be no franchise player. They'll get another Dylan Larkin and get Ben Years. They need a D. They should pick a D, but, well, maybe not. They need everything. So it's interesting. All right, so teams will be restricted for moving up more than 10 spots if it wins the lottery. Why is it so many spots? That's crazy. Teams cannot win the lottery more than twice in a five-year period. Well, the reason it is said that to you is because they cannot give, like, what they did with the Rangers yeah. from 16 to 1. Which is crazy. But even, even 10 seems a lot. So, um, you know. Why wouldn't they make it so if you win, you only move up five spots? Well, because you have a team like with, with you know, that don't make the playoff, and then also the first round pick, whatever they are. So I think that was the reason last year, but we'll see what's happening. But I just want to mention too, the second thing I want to mention, they signed a big contract with a company it's called Synergy um, about all the lights and the, um, and the building. They're going to have a contract for over... 4,800 different ring around the around the around the, um, America. Okay. Going, so that'd be great for energy saving, if you that, okay. and also for the gas, whatever you was call it, whatever they call it. So a uh, big contract for this was a big news in NHL this morning um, about that one over there. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So another Game good night tonight, NBC double night. So I like when the, the Wednesday night is a double header right on TV. Game. So um, this is a back-to-back -back game. Uh, Ottawa beat Flame 2-1. to one. And, um, you know, we'll see how, they, they, again, we can talk about, you know, Dallas, Calgary, and, you know, the are kind of team where inconsistency and, you know, Columbus and the team right now, I think we can put on the, on the same conversation. But, um, you know, Calgary cannot drop those games against Ottawa. They might. I mean, I don't know. I, I think that they – I don't know what Ottawa is going to do in net. I can't see their goaltending holding out for two games in a row. But the Flames are not going to generate crazy offense. So I don't, I don't know what to think, you know. Like, I think well, there's a kind, it's a kind – well, it's a kind of game they can score four or five goals because of the, the, the goaltender situation. They could. We've just seen so many two to one games already from them. I just think that's the way they're going to go. I mean, um, you know, I like I said, I don't give on them. It's just like they need to find that kind of. I'm not sure they can able to find like a five six game stretch. You know, they played two great right. games against Montreal. They play one good game against Toronto. Then they lose Ottawa. They lose one game against Toronto. It's so hard to go from five hundred to jump six fifty. You have to find nine and then ten, and I don't see those kind of team do that. You're no. going to see this for Washington. You're going to see this from Islanders. You're going to see the maybe Toronto or Edmonton, but those team like Montreal, Vancouver, uh, you know, Vancouver did pretty good, but still, it's too hard to get that kind of stretch game. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. The Wild and Ducks look for the Wild to run over the Ducks, but you know. No, the Wild, you know, it's uh, these struggles for the last five games. I'll be honest with you, they're still winning the last game two to one. Uh, yeah. And then this, uh, you talk about Buffalo mess. I think Anaheim is a kind of player like it's a kind of team like that right now. But it's again, insane. I'm happy for them. I'll have to give him credit. You know what? They bring Tristel. They bring Zegras. They go there yeah. with the young guests. You know, Terry play, still exactly. play. Call to a play, and he, 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 you know, what I mean, like check their lineup and let them play. See five or six kid player there. Well, I mean, look, they're letting them play, and the guys that are the veterans are the ones that are not doing great. I mean, I Henry agree with you that okay. one. Silver is Silver. terrible. Reichel's doing fine, but he's yo, he's a yo yo up and down. So, I mean, I think the kids are probably let them play. Yep, I agree with you. And I think that's great for them to see that. Silverberg? Like, come on. No. Yeah, but that's trouble over there. And, you know, on the flip side, we'll give you a Gib, uh, Gibson. have a lot of trouble. You know, he's an injury a lot this year. Don't play level. He should play. So. No. He's he's definitely not. He, I don't know. I think when he's healthy, he's amazing. Like, he's a great goaltender. I just don't think in that situation it's going to work. He's, yep. Uh, the, the Sabres are going to win tonight, right, Pierre? Um, it was mentioned by one someone today. 
about maybe tonight's the end, the, the end of the Sabres, but I, I don't see it against Pittsburgh. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think you just got to keep saying, they're going to win tonight. And then one day, they maybe they will. Jets and Canucks, this is a good game. I'm really interested in this. I think Jets got to get back on the winning side of things. A little bit of a streak could be nice. And the Canucks got to claw back to 500. So I think they're both going to be hungry. I feel yeah. like we're still not seeing a great performance from Elias Peterson. Like he's getting points, but. Yeah. You want we'll to see a little bit more from him. I mean, this is not what you would expect. He's got 10 goals in 26 games, but he's he's missed 10 games, Pierre. Yep. That's not how. Is he still out or is he back? Well, who again? Peterson. Elias Peterson? Uh, yeah, he's still out. They're missing a lot of players there. They're missing now, you know, all that. He's a day to day right now. Maybe come back. Uh, but uh, all that, Peterson, Beagle, uh, Pearson. Um, they missed a couple of defensemen at the beginning of the year, so it's That's a team, you know. Um, but you know, this thing go how them go does true, right? He's been so, well, but you know, so we have the right. game, he's on final, fire. Final game tonight. Oh, no, we got two. Oh, wait, that's that was last night. Um, Kings and Sharks. Um, you know, Sharks beat the Kings uh, surprisingly a bit, but, uh, you know, this is a game like, you know, it's like it's the bottom of the West Division for me. Um, two teams looking for, so. We had, um, we had a comment from Don't Peak Boy. Yeah. So, you know, I think the, the Sharks, <laughs> you know, the Sharks should be better. Um, you still have a time to get better, the time to be ready, but I'm not sure they can. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think any of us are fans of uh, Tim Peel. Don't peak, boy. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then this game. I don't know. I heard it's postponed. Is it true? Yeah, it is, right? So it's another game postponed for this week. Uh, really concerned about that part over there. Um, you know, and I think now because I know it's Montreal, so I can have a chance to follow up. Um, the problem Montreal is going to face right now because they're going, they're going to contest a lot of game together. And that affect any team that have a problem with COVID nineteen. Some go through well, some they go. And more long, more you wait to get COVID, like Montreal, your second part of the half, second half. Now we have more games coming all together. It's harder for Montreal uh, to do that. Um, I'll be not surprised the game tonight again. And I am it could be could be it could be also postponed, Michael. Really. Because they have four players on the COVID nineteen yesterday, oh. so um, I'm gonna be surprised over there. And I forgot to mention that part. So um, we have yesterday we got um, four players for the for the Anaheim. It was uh, let's go back right here. Gets love, gets love, gets love, gets love. No, it was. Uh, by the way, we had Leo Kamarov. He was on the waiver list. Is yesterday, he, is he still playing? Leo Kamarov, Omar yeah, Kamarov from the Islanders. Yeah, he's just on the taxi squad sometime. And oh, okay, all right, Pierre, I will see you later tonight. Yes, everybody, anything else to add? No, nope. any other comments you get around? No, only the bad one about Tim Peel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it, you know, it, it's just hard on them, but uh, it's sad when a guy like them, he's going to be, you know, many experience. I don't know how many games he did in the NHL, but uh, to leave, you know, lose his job like that and move on, like, it's not fun. I'm sure they'll just, he was going to retire, so I'm sure they'll just retire him. Yeah, we don't know behind it is right there, you know what I mean? Uh, but again, for to, to keep the integrity, to be sure, like, no referee does um, some some stuff like that. I think is very important for uh, the, the loyalty of the NHL for sure. So um, that's pretty much it. But I just want to mention to you, uh, Jake DeBras is on cover session right now to go to Colorado. Um, for what? A defenseman? Possible. Um, 
<laughs> I, I think, you know, you have a team like, you know, Colorado, Winnipeg, Islanders. Interesting. For me, are three teams, and maybe Washington. There are three teams. They should look to add players. They believe they can go all the way to the Stanley Cup. I don't see any chance at Tampa. I don't see any chance with Vegas. You, so, wait, you don't think Tampa can make the Stanley Cup? No, I don't see they will make oh, any change, like major chance to win oh, the change, team. Change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you would do if you're Vegas. I mean, I think that they just need to get a healthy Alex Peter Angelo they, back and maybe Leonard. If yeah. they can get those guys back, they're set. Um, Colorado, I could see picking up a winger would probably be helpful. I agree they with you. Second line type winger. So Debrusque is interesting. The Palmieri trade was proposed would have been interesting. <laughs> we got kind of caught on that. Um, Winnipeg, a defenseman. Winnipeg would really benefit from a defenseman. They're not far off, though. They're they're interesting. I do you believe Edmonton would make a move? I mean, it's going to be difficult for them to make a move, but it would be smart if they got. I mean, they they have two holes to me. If they could figure out one more defenseman that can play top four consistently. With you know Clefbaum gone, although Barry's been great, Nurse has been great, so maybe th that's not such a big deal. Bear's been a bit of a struggle. I like Bouchard more and more, Evan Bouchard. But I definitely, if they had a, a second line scoring guy that was more consistent, would be nice. Yep, I just mentioned to you, Calarado, a B Ram was out again yesterday. Oh, uh, was he? A uh, lower body injury, so it's, it was a it's a day to day, but it's not a problem he have over there. Uh, Kane yesterday got his six hundred sixty five um, assist, Michael, as an as a winger. That he now became the fourth in NHL. I want to I want you to tell me the three players winger have the I'm most assists him. like him. On so how many as, as a winger? Kane is number four now, a 65, 60, 665 helper. Now you have triple R winger, have most assists to him. Who are Yari they? Curry. Who? Yari Curry. Yep, 731. You're missing two. <laughs> it might be Luke Robitaille. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, a playmaking winger. Um... Who would be a winger? I mean, is there a Mahavlich in there? That's wouldn't he doesn't even have that many points. Um, geez, who's a really good playmaking winger? I, I is Mike Bossy in that discussion? He didn't play that long though. No, he was. I don't know. I'm probably gonna be like, damn it, that makes sense. Yeah, Yager. Oh yeah, of course, Yager's the greatest <laughs> of all. <laughs> Yeah. Seven seven is a number one, by the way. Number seven seventy one. What do they yeah. consider Yager? Left or right? Yeah, but one player is, I was surprised. Play for Montreal Canadian. Guy Lafleur. Yeah, I guess that's right because he was a winger. He wasn't a centerman. Yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, seven hundred twenty eight yeah, assists. Oh yeah, that doesn't. I mean, he had 130 point seasons. Yeah, but I expect him like more like a score. You know, like you talk about Bossy, you talk about Robitar. For me, uh, it's a type of him like they get more goal assists. I don't think so. He got way more assists here. Look. Oh um, yeah, yeah, more assists. Yeah, 500. What 10 goal? I believe. Yeah, which is great. I mean, he's a superstar. Like the flower, the original flower. 66, 69, 80, 72, 77, 75. There might have been some padding in there. I don't know. Didn't they look, give him look, look at 90, as 119, 125, 120, 135, 132, 119, 125. The guy was on fire for five, six years in his show. Oh, he's the best player in the NHL for a while. Wow. Like who was, who was in this time? Maybe Bobby Orr. Uh, and it was late Bobby or Michael because Bobby was in 70, 71. 
uh, that time, you had not many teams. It was only Montreal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because it was 67 was expansion, right? So Boston yep. came in, but he's about the same time. So you know, maybe that time, I would say to you, one player was good on that time. It was Gilbert Perrault. Oh, Perrault was ridiculous, yeah. Right? So that those did 70s. He, I don't know, he didn't have that many points, though, did he? Well, I have a couple of good seasons with Richard Martin oh, and René Robert. The French, the French connect, connection. Yeah, the Robert and uh, Pitt Martin. Yeah. But he really, like, compare, by comparison, those guys were definitely... Well, look, he had a good year, 90, 96, oh. 115, 195. But he's not like 32. <laughs> what? He's not like Guy Lafleur and Bobby Orr. No. Like Bobby Orr is like... No, but again, he's a tight end. 135. <laughs> 122. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like during those times, he was pretty good. You know what I mean? He was. You know, we, can, we can mention also Phil Esposito. I was going to bring him up because he was like, look at this, Pierre. 152, 133, 130, 145, 127, 126. Yep. Come yep. on. Jeez. Look yep. at this. 40, 49, 43, 76, 66 goals for 55, 68, and 61. Come yeah. on! What All he did after three. that, he won. Rangers, so it's junk. He couldn't get a hundred points in the Rangers. He hated that team. They were like losers. That's a big trait. Was it Kent? Who was in that? Ken Hodge and Stanfield for Pitt Martin, Jack Norris, and Jill Marat. Jean? No, Jean Ratel. No, no. That was this, that was this trade, wasn't it? Oh yeah, wasn't right. That, that was yeah. the Chicago trade. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's that's right. Yeah. John Rattel was a very good player. John, John Rattel was, with Vic Edfield and Rodrigue Gilbert. Yeah, John Rattel was a a gentleman. Me, I remember like Ed Jacobin. Oh my God, the goalie. And Toronto that time was Mike Palmetier. I loved Mike Palmetier. I was just loving this one, like Mike. Palmatier. <laughs> he was a uh, he was the left great. one. He was on the on his side, goaltender. Yeah, Mike Palmatier was is he still scouting? I don't know if he is. Yeah. And my <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he you know, he wanted a story. So Mike Palmatier, so Steve Briere, my buddy, he uh goaltender go for the put for the Toronto Maple Leaf. And you know he went to the meeting as his, what is his first meeting? Yeah, Mike Bacock, Jacques Lemaire, Lula, <laughs> Lula Mariello, my Shanahan. You know what I mean? Those yeah. guys and the table around C. Breer, and then you have Mike Palmetier, and they have other players like you know. And he said, "Look," he said, "I cannot talk. I can. I don't want to open my mouth." And he said, Mike Pamite was tell him, tell the people some comments. And he was like, oh my God, this is not good. This is not right. And every year, Steve, you don't want to talk. <laughs> he said, I have about 200 Sunday Cup beside me. And I don't want to tell to Pamite, no, don't, no, it's not true. Because Pamite was a scout for, yeah. for the Toronto, but he but was telling him, like, time, you know, I he was said maybe a, he would say maybe that golden door is this, this, this. And then yeah. Rhea would say, no, he's not this. But Steve doesn't want to talk about this because, <laughs> yeah, you know, he said, what do you think he would tell me, right? Who are you? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, me, I, I want to give him credit for my backpack on that one because he's always protects Steve Rhea at the beginning uh, because, you know, it's not easy when you, um, you're not – on no right and um, remember when the referees had their names on the back of their jerseys is it myers him or I'm lewis sure. i'm not Who's sure this guy lewis lewis here we go <laughs> i know my people that, those are the days they had their names on their jersey and they're like oh oh <laughs> i mean i always see this i see this right now i see like steve Lammer. look the net Oh my God! It's um, Tom. It's what's his name? Terry. Um, oh, 
Oh my god. Um not Terrio. No, Crozer. Tessier. Orville Tessier. Orville like, DC. Wow. What penalty shot? Yeah. I don't know who's Patterson, by the way. Rick Patterson? I don't know. Check the square, the crease. Like those guys right now, I don't know if you still have some people here, but I'm not sure you have some. Yeah, look, look, Pamati. <laughs> Way out. He stacks the pads. Oh, come on. Come on, Pierre. <laughs> did you see the player? Like, <laughs> he goes straight to the net. Like, he did not go left and right. Like, you know, the hockey, like, that's crazy. Look the stand. Yeah, oh, my like, God. Look the jersey. Wasn't Rick Bo Pat Patterson? Boje Bo Bo Salming. Boje Salming. Rick yeah. Patterson was forward, too. Jeez. That's why the guy, look, he barely skate, probably. He was like a fourth line forward, though. He was, he had really? like, yeah, he was not good. No move on that. Well, he tried to put his stuff in between the legs, but I love when Paul Mateer came back for the old timer game and he made an insane saves and he got hurt. <laughs> he got hurt. <laughs> in the outdoor game, they brought him back. Did you, did you see that? Um, yeah. So they bring him back and he got injured. They had to carry him out of the game because he made a spectacular. The guy's like 65 or something. I just want to mention this to you. I just heard this right now. Connor Bedar have 10 points the last six games. Uh, yes. So all the people that were saying this guy is like not, you know, he was the first exceptional player in the WHL. This guy is ridiculous. Oh, my God. Look who's here. Craig Minervini. Oh, my God, Craig. Where are you? We have Craig Minervini. We're watching Mike Palmentier videos to wrap up the show. Hey, so hey Greg. Show I'm, so I'm sure you remember up. Mike Palmentier, Greg. <laughs> you seeing safe, Pierre? <laughs> Look at the mask. I love it. Watch. And then he was done. They had to carry him out. <laughs> He's like, I'm done. <laughs> so this is 2016, Pierre. He's got to be 60. Okay, hold oh, yeah. Look at home. Is that Holmstrom? How are they in the same game? <laughs> How many was like 40? Not Mike Palmentier, though. Holmstrom, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to pull him out of the game. <laughs> no, this was the, uh, the Adenum game, right? Yeah, it's 2016. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. you have to get out of the, the game. Yeah, like, so let's look. How old is Mike Palmentier? Hey, 60. Look, he was 20 or 70. He's 68, 72. He's 62 in this game. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, he's a maniac. Yeah. He always had knee problems, right? Remember, he always had knee problems because he was doing crazy stuff. He made an incredible save on Holmstrom. That was the last save of his career. He's done. It's over. Dave Ellett. <laughs> that was the greatest. He was said, Where's the beer now? I <laughs> Oh my god, Dave Ellett. I have problems with him. Hate Dave Ellett. Yeah. You know what? I'll be honest with you. Like, you know, I know he's 61, whatever, but you see those those guys was compete. Like, look, he tried, he gave everything on that shot. Yeah. yeah. You said, you know what? He should say the guy go around me. Who care? Right? So uh first of all, scrambling net miner. He wasn't scrambling, he was a reflex goalie, Craig. <laughs> Remember reflex goalies? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, Tim, tough news for Tim Peel. So I'm on the, like, for sure. I think, like, look, I, there's a, there's some hypocrisy here. That's kind of what my point this morning was, Craig. Like, oh, we've never heard of people, you know, we have terms. Make up call. There's a reason. Putting away the whistle. There's a reason. Like, we, we allow judgment by referees. And that's always been the case. So to, to single him out, I think, is a little hypocritical. Is he stupid for being on the hot mic and making a comment that, oh, I wanted to get the next one? Yeah. Judgment game. Exactly. So I, I think that there's that's it's kind of hypocritical. We you know, do we like the referees deciding anything? Is it as annoying? No, you want integrity, but let's have real integrity. 
let's say, listen, this is a judgment game. Let's be human about it. These guys aren't robots. Yeah, one guy said this right now here is a he said Tim Peel just got caught, said out loud what many officials think all the time. Exactly. Like there's bigger problems with refereeing than Tim Peel. Yeah. And it, <laughs> he was probably saying Nashville lost the benefit of the doubt, probably called a few ticky tacks the other way. Exactly. He was making it up. He he was trying to do have a makeup call. So, you know, that's, in a sense, that's human judgment that we've always seen from referees. Pierre and I, you've been, we've been on the bench before. You see it. Sometimes they're biased. Sometimes they have a different flavor. If you're a yep. good coach, and this is what John Hines, I think, was saying is, hey, no excuse. We should have done something with that advantage or that, short, you know, shorthanded. Like, we have to kill that penalty. That's our job, and that's what we did. And that's the way you think of as a coach. We practice penalty kill and power play for a reason because I can't control what the refs do. And the NHL's always protected the refs, Pierre. You can't even say anything about them. You get fined. Yep. Uh, so Leo Kamarov, he was clear from the waiver list, by the way. Just want to mention that. That's a Frenchy tactic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Craig's been watching you on the bench. You know, you know, Craig ref with me a couple of games. So, oh, uh, yeah. So that's Craig tell me all the time, by the way. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Greg said, uh, yeah, the, the white team is the next penalty. Check this rep. <laughs> that was funny. Now we know the truth. Piers, that's yeah. why the refs and Craig, they're biased on, on favor of the refs. Well, I bet, you know, when he's with me on the ice, he's a, he's a star. I'm just behind me. <laughs> Even he talks, he's a star in everything he does. So, you know what I mean? So, the overachiever in this group. Yep. No, it was fun. That's all about. <laughs> Love it. Yep. So that's conclude the show for today. Thanks, Greg, to stop by. We appreciate. It. Look forward to see you next uh, couple of then maybe next week or final week, and uh, we miss you. And um, your Panthers lost again back to back first time in the uh, ten eleven attempts. I think there was nine zero one. Michael this year with no back to back game it was the first time this year he lost two game back to back. Wow. Yeah. So there was 901 before yesterday. So, uh, you know, but again, like you said earlier, back up, maybe hurt them. Uh, you know, he says he enjoys was... working with you. Yeah. I love him. You know what I mean? We have a good time. His son play for me, a junior, by the way, Michael. Oh, that's cool. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. That's He's awesome. a goaltender. Like maybe he was, maybe he was thinking cool. about Mike Palmetia too. No, just kidding. I um, love him. Yeah, his son is great. He's uh, I, I don't want to mention maybe Greg would tell you. I think he's in the in the pilot, everything like that, in the North Florida. He's in Daytona, I believe. He played a. Uh, they have a team called it. I think it's not. I'm not sure it's a CHA team over there. Yeah, Max Minervini. Yep, you're going to see Palm Beach over there, I believe. Oh, he played ACHA three, so he's playing like college. Um... Uh, what do you call it? Um, club. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. Yep. So um, just want to mention this to you. PRAU. There we go. He got this it. Bob Joyce. I remember Bob Joyce. The Bob Joyce, Washington, and uh, Boston Bruins. And Boston Bruins, right? Yep. yep. You have a good year over there. He did. He had, he had a few good years. Was he an American player too, I think, right? Yeah. He was not wearing number 23. Could be wrong. I always get him confused with John Drews, but yeah. Weren't they in the same team? Yeah, he was all right. He had one good year. He looked like he was going to be a superstar here. 49 and 12. Like, yeah. So he had 61 points his first like 92 NHL games. Oh, he was Canadian. I didn't know that. He's St. John. Okay. Oh, he went to New uh, North Dakota. That's what it was. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, he, he was all right. 83 points in 158 games. That'd be like a $4 million player now, Pierre. Yeah, I'm sure he wished he was that year, right. that area. Those those players, right? Yeah. that would. This is, these would be great numbers now. Imagine Gila Fleur. Oh, my God. Come on. He's about $10 million, $12 million. Easy. He'd still be the greatest player. He's sick, right? He's a, he have a cancer. 
Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. He reco he recover recover really a bit, but uh, yeah, and I didn't good. That. Yeah. that's good. Yeah. Yeah, some franchise restaurant. You struggle a lot. There you go. Crazy. All right, I gotta go uh, work. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks again. Thanks, Greg. Stop by. Thanks, NHL. Thanks, Domi. Everything like that. Whatever they are. And thanks for everybody. Look forward to see you tomorrow, Thursday, 11 o'clock for what? Another great show of the Hockey Nation Live show. Thanks, everybody. See you tomorrow. Happy thanks, Wednesday. Jumping on.